One of the most notorious con artists in the history of our world is an Austrian man named Victor Lustig. Victor Lustig was so good at scamming people that he got Americans to buy his fake money printing machine, got money for a farm that didn't belong to him, and sold the famous Eiffel Tower not once but twice in 1925. Fortunately for anyone who wishes to understand the secrets of con artists before his death, Lustig revealed his secrets in what is today known as Lustig's 10 Rules of Con. I'll share those 10 secrets of con with you in this video but before then, let's know who Victor Lustig was. Born in 1890 is what is now called the Czech Republic, Lustig was a very smart kid. He was gifted, could speak many languages and did so well in school. But there was a problem. Like most gifted kids, Lustig got bored of school so easily and to keep himself busy, he started gambling, pickpocketing and stealing. Surprisingly to him, he did all of these things effortlessly. Another thing Lustig did was to study people, their habits, mannerisms and especially their weaknesses. So by age 19, Lustig had done enough scamming in Paris and he was looking for a greener pasture. America seemed so good a place to steal people's money so Lustig decided to travel to the US. This guy was so good at what he did that he couldn't even get to the US before he started his business of con. On the ship to the US, Lustig scammed the people he was traveling with and when he got to the US, he created a fake money printing machine and got a lot of people to pay $30,000 for it. In 1922, Lustig went to Missouri and showed interest in an old farm that a bank had repossessed but could not sell. Lustig wanted the farm. So he went to the bank that owned the farm and he gave a sob story of how his life of nobility in Austria was destroyed when the country was overthrown as a result of the First World War. He claimed to the bank that he had come to America to rebuild his life and what was left of his family fortune and chose a life of farming. He then offered the bankers $22,000 in bonds to buy the farm and the bank gladly accepted it. Lustig also convinced them to exchange an additional 10,000 of bonds for cash so that he can operate the farm. And the bankers again gladly accepted. The trickery comes in when Lustig at the time of the exchange switched envelopes and made off with both the bonds and the cash. Funny thing is that he didn't bother to hide his escape and when the bankers hired a private detective and got caught, he was cooperative. But on the train ride with the captors, Lustig convinced them that if they did press charges, there would be a run on the bank by his depositors and the bank would go belly up. Lustig then managed to convince his captors that they should give him $1,000 for the inconvenience that the arrest had caused him. So he managed to twist the whole story and walked away to freedom with their $1,000, which is equivalent to $17,000 in today's money. Lustig later traveled to Montreal, Canada on a business trip. He decided to con a Vermont banker named Lenos Merton. He arranged with the pickpocket to steal Merton's pocket watch and he did. But he wasn't satisfied and decided to give it back in 24 hours. But that is exactly what he had in mind in the first place. By giving the pocket watch back, he had gained the trust of the banker. Lustig then introduced Merton to a scheme that he was using to earn money since the family's fortune had been confiscated during the revolution. He asked the same alias he used at the bank in his other con. Lustig claimed that his cousin worked as a bookie and was able to intercept the race wires, meaning that he could find out the winners of every horse race a few minutes before anyone else. He explained how it was a guaranteed win. Merton agreed to the tip and in the process of the con, he announced that his wife was ill and they had to move as quickly as possible. The pressure made Merton make one last bet but Lustig gave him a wrong tip. That meant that Lustig had just taken $30,000 for a bet that Merton had made in a bookie joint that was set up in the first place. Lustig's ingenious con that led him to sell in the Eiffel Tower had been told by a lot of people so I don't want to repeat that here. But you get the idea, Victor Lustig had a PhD in con art history and you should listen to him if he gives you some clues. Here are Lustig's 10 rules of con. Before his death, Lustig wrote down the 10 commandments for pulling the best cons. Knowing these rules of con can help protect you against modern con artists so let's dive into it. 1. Be a patient listener. 2. Never look bored. 3. Wait for the other person to reveal any political opinions then agree with them. 4. Let the mark reveal any religious views, then have the same ones. 5. Never discuss illness unless some special concern is shown. 6. Never pry into a person's personal circumstances, they will tell you eventually. 7. Hint at sex talk but don't follow it up unless the other person shows a strong interest. 8. Never boast, just let your importance be quietly obvious. 
9. Never be untidy and 10. Never get drunk. If there's any single thing these 10 rules remind you of, that should be this book. For example, there are some of the chapters in How to Win Friends and Influence People. Be a good listener, talk in terms of the other person's interest, make the other person feel important, smile, let the other person do a great deal of the talking etc etc the simple reason why the rules of Khan are strikingly similar to the rules of getting people to like you is that well the primary work of a con man is to make you like him or her if possible he wants to get you to love him usually when we like someone we trust them and also with this trust a con artist can get us to do what he wants let's see some real life examples this lady is Nicole Hutchinson after selling her inherited property, she traveled to California and through an online dating app, Hinge, she met a guy by the name Howe. Listen to this. He started asking questions about my family and my past experiences. Remember, rule number one, be a patient listener. The reason why a con artist wants to listen to you patiently is to know who you are, what you like, what your world views are, especially your religious or political views. For this lady, after the scammer listened patiently to her, he found out that she was born in China. The next thing was to tell her that he was born in the same town in China as she is. We kind of bonded over that. If the lady had been born in India or England, that guy would have claimed to be born in the same country. If she had expressed a strong religious view, for example saying she hated to eat pigs because she's a Muslim, the guy would have told her that he never ate a pig in his life because it's a sin. If she had expressed a strong political view, for example, saying she was a Republican, the guy would have shown her a fake tattoo of Donald Trump on his hand. That's rules four and five. Wait for the other person to reveal any political opinion, then agree with them. Let the mark reveal any religious views, then have the same ones. The idea here is to break people's resistance by making them feel you're their best friend. We kind of bonded over that. Think about Anna Sorokin. She stormed New York City in 2015 and pretended to be some heiress who was about to inherit a lot of money. Her trick was simple, generosity. For example, she would tip waitresses $100 at every restaurant she went. It's at most on me. People talked about you tipping wildly. Well, people are, tipping people Uber are drivers, ridiculous, yeah. Tipping concierges $100 at a time. She would invite her victims to her hotel room where they'll eat and drink. The idea is to bond with them and make them feel that they were good friends, then hit them hard. Anna had scammed hundreds of thousands of dollars. But when the local media found out about her exploits, far from being dismissed as a common thief, now to fake heiress. If the scammer is dealing with a group of people, the trick is to use a lot of togetherness words, words that show that the con artist and his followers are family members. Listen to this video from a woman who stole more than $4 billion in a fake crypto coin. It is really a pleasure for me to be here one and a half years after we launched our cryptocurrency OneCoin. I think today we spoke a lot about the net worth of OneCoin, which I strongly believe will be the number one cryptocurrency worldwide. And the reason why I believe it is because I see all of you here. By making people feel that they belong to a community, con artists can build a cult of people who would do anything, including putting their life savings into a fake project. Listen to the WeWork CEO. Limited by age or gender, anybody that wants to be part of something greater than themselves, that understands that bringing meaning and intention into work and bringing those two things together is a member of the We Generation. And the money? tends to follow. Yeah. It's that community being surrounded by a group of like-minded individuals, being part of something bigger than yourself inspires people to work hard or putting in more effort and some people are putting in less and you know it's sort of a balance and I think in general the world is going to be a better place if on the ha one hand we can be part of a greater thing but on the other hand we can still have our own admir our own desire. While the investors of WeWork invested billions of dollars to run the company that was worth far less than its evaluation, the company's CEO traveled around the world and lived in palaces which cost him more than $90 million according to this Wall Street Journal article. In conclusion, have a look at the 10 commandments of Khan again. 1. Be a patient listener. 2. Never look bored. 3. Wait for the other person to reveal any political opinions then agree with them. 4. 
Let the mark reveal any religious views, then have the same ones. 5. Never discuss illness unless some special concern is shown. 6. Never pry into a person's personal circumstances. They will tell you eventually. 7. Hint at sex talk, but don't follow it up unless the other person shows a strong interest. 8. Never boast, just let your importance be quietly obvious. 9. Never be untidy. And of course, number 10. Never get drunk. Except for the number 10 rule which was designed to make him remain sane, all the rules of cons were designed to make a con artist seem like a good friend you're comfortable around. The lesson here is simple. Be suspicious of a stranger acting too nice and a friend telling you a story that's too good to be true. Thanks for watching.